I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Hello and Bona Sosifiwe. My name is Brian Mashigadi. Welcome to Life Series. We head over to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and I'm going to be reading verse number 1 and the Bible says now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made and he said to the woman did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden and the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. It's very interesting to think about who said what. He said, she said, we said, you know, just to think about who said what. It's very interesting to think about it, especially in light of the creation story. This is the fall of man, the story of Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve and the serpent, of course. And so as we're thinking in this month or looking in this uh, season of our identity in Christ, we'd like to just handle this brief topic or this topic in brief about who told you who you are. You see, many times over the years, the enemy has come to attack believers, to attack man at the point of the word. Because the moment the enemy gets you to undermine what God says, to undermine the word of God, he's gotten you. He's got you flat-footed, there's not much you can do. Because man, you and I, are sustained by the word that God has spoken. You see, the things that we see and the things that we don't see, everything is held in place by the word of God. You see, God has never sent out a word to renew or update what he said from the beginning. When God said, let there be, it is that same word that he spoke that still holds everything in place exactly the way it is. He has not given another word to keep sustaining it. The word of God is mighty and powerful. When God says something about you, when God gives an instruction, when God says who you are, or says, gives you direction on what you're supposed to be doing, or what you're about, then that word is powerful. Little wonder the devil knows that, and he comes to attack us on exactly those grounds. He will come to us and say, who did God really say? Did God really say? Recently we've been going through the series uh, about honoring God and the bishop has been teaching us about placing weight on the words of God. That the word of God is not supposed to be weightless. That we don't just look at it and cast it off. No, the word of God carries a lot of weight. That if God says something about you, then you're supposed to follow it to the very end. Now, the enemy comes to Eve um, and Adam, man at the beginning, and says to them, did God really say? The moment Eve begins to doubt what God really said, or begins to exaggerate, because even exaggerating is making the word of God weightless, because you don't believe that the word is heavy enough to carry you through to wherever it is that you need to go. So exaggerating or undermining is all the same. You're not giving weight to the word of God. So the enemy comes in, and of course we know that after that, the man falls from the position that God had placed him in. Much, much later, in that same story, um, in, in, towards the end, Jesus, uh, God comes uh, in the cool of the day to just check up on man. And man, Adam and Eve, they hear God in the cool of the day in the garden and they hide themselves. Okay, As they are hiding themselves, um, they are hiding because they are guilty. But God asks a question, in verse 11 of Genesis chapter 3 and he said who told you that you were naked have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from God's question is who told you and that's the same question I think you and I should ask ourselves every time we find ourselves struggling with identity every time we find ourselves trying to fit ourselves into places that we are not supposed to be the question you're supposed to ask yourself is who told you, Moshigadi? Who told you, sir? Who told you, ma'am? Who told you? What are you believing? 
What words have you allowed? What words have you given residence in the space of your heart? What words have you given residence in your mind? Who told you? Whatever it is that you're believing, sometimes you feel like you're unworthy. You feel like you're not deserving. You feel like you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not competent for whatever it is. You feel like you're not gifted. You're not anointed. Like God cannot use you. The question is, who told you? I like when God is asking the questions to Moses at the call of Moses in the book of Exodus, when God is calling Moses, and Moses is saying, oh, but I am a stammerer, I am this and this, I am not able to, and God is asking him, is it not I, is it not I that creates the man? Because the question should be, what you're saying, who told you? When God is giving you an assignment and you're saying, oh God, but I am timid, but I can't give that to so and so, the question is, who told you? Who told you who you are? Who are you listening to? Who are you giving audience to? What words are occupying your mental real estate? What words are taking up residence in the space of your heart? Whose words are you esteeming more than the words of God? And so the question I would throw to you today is, are there words that are higher than the creative words of God? Because the creative words of God spoke things into being and that word still continues to hold things in place exactly as they are. Is it any different with the words he has spoken over our lives? I submit to you, no, it's not. What has God said about you? Hold on to that. Get back into the word of God. Listen to what God is saying through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, through the fellowship together with other believers, like-minded believers. Sit down and hear what does God say about me. And whatever it is that I find myself believing, whenever I find myself in doubt or in fear, being timid and so on and so forth, the question to myself should always be, who told you, Mwashigadi? Who's telling you what you're believing? Is it God? Because if it's not, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're not supposed to be where you are. Because God truly does have the final say. The Lord bless you and do you good in Jesus' name.